It's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor Mike Campbell. You will recall, some of you came to the conference uh, two years ago, that uh, Mike actually gave one of our plenary sessions there uh, to great effect. And um, he's an extremely knowledgeable person, obviously, as you can see from his uh, biographical details. He is currently, I think, still the Director of Research and Policy at... Uh, yes, you, you guess. For the moment. <laughs> for the moment. Uh, but, of course, uh, the whole theme of today is about the next five years, and actually, every time you turn on the radio, you're not actually sure what is going to survive for the next five years from the uh, new government, but we shall wait and see. Mike, thank you very much indeed for coming. Without further ado, I'll hand you over to Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell. Thank you very much. That's... No, 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 no. No, see if that's relevant at the end. It's uh, <laughs> certainly not relevant now. Um, thanks ever so much for your inviting me. It really is a pleasure... Uh, to be here, and this presentation has now been set to music, um, but it's not available today. Um, but uh, that was a terrific session, I'm afraid, quite difficult to follow. The next 40 minutes will be very different, but I hope equally, though distinctively, um, interesting. It seriously is very important, because as I often say at events uh, rather like this, if you're engaging with learning and training and development professionals, you are really the people who can make the difference um, that I'm going to be talking about. Because what I'm going to talk about, actually, is um, something of a crisis. Um, I don't know those of you who um, know anything about the Chinese language, but the, um, the character for crisis in Chinese is composed of two elements, one of which stands for, if you like, threat, and one of which stands for opportunity. So I mean crisis in that sense. I think we are at one of those junctures in politics, in history, and in education and training, uh, where the future will, as Jack said, look radically different from the past. For good or bad, it will look radically different. You have only just seen the beginning of it, and I will give you some tasters I think, of the future, or at least in terms of the future direction of how this looks when you work for an organisation like I do, whose job it is to advise government. That's what we do. We advise government on skills, jobs and growth. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, you know, well, my short answer to this question is no, it isn't an option. It's a life or death decision for societies for companies, for people, actually. That's what I'm going to argue. So it's not an option. You absolutely have to do this, but you have to do it rather differently in the future and better in the future than we've done it in the past, and you are key players in doing it, more of it, better of it in the future uh, than in the past. So I'm going to talk about why skills are really valuable, how skilled are we in the UK, what the agenda is, and what we ought to do about it going forward. But remember, I'm looking at it sort of rather top-down from a sort of national point of view rather than a company point of view, though I will outline some of what I think are the implications for companies as we go ahead. So are we, are we OK for a little, um, a little train ride here? Um, unfortunately, this slide hasn't come out uh, as it was supposed to. I don't know why, really. These are numbers. They should be names of countries. Don't worry about it. That's uh, <laughs> we're we're seventy three point six. We're the UK. We're seventy three point six of it. Just just imagine that the world, uh, the advanced countries of the world, are divided into um, into into these quadrants, depending on uh, their job record. I'll call it that, and depending on their productivity record. And I I use those two metrics because they're the two things that determine. I've got to move over here, apparently. I'm not allowed to wander around, sorry. Um, I, uh, they're the two things that determine prosperity. They're the two things that determine economic growth. So that's why I'm measuring employment and productivity here. And uh, basically, the UK is over here. So it's not in a bad place, but it's not in a great place. Um, where we actually are... Um, if you're interested, is that we're uh, in world league table forms of your in terms of your form if you're interested. We're 10th in the world in terms of jobs and 11th in the world in terms of productivity. Now, we define world class 
as being in the top eight countries in the world. That's how we've done it. Rightly or wrongly, let's not have a debate about it now. But that's where we want to go, and that's where the government has signed up to go, in terms of jobs, in terms of skills, in terms of productivity. And my point to you is, we are not in the top eight on employment, but we're in touching distance of it. We're not in the top eight uh, in terms of productivity and competitiveness, though we're within touching distance of it. And I'm going to tell you in a minute where we are in skills. But the short answer, if you want to go out for a P now and miss what I've got to say, is we're nowhere near. Um, but it's a more interesting story than that, so uh, uh, I'd advise you not quite to go out yet. I'm going to have to move these papers. It doesn't quite work like that. That's better. OK. Firstly, are skills important? If I had more time, I could say more about this. But basically, I could show you two graphs which show just how important they are to people. And then I'll give you one statistic which shows just how important it is to UK PLC. For people, which is, after all, what it's about at the end of the day, this is a graph of um, the proportion of people who are in jobs according to various disadvantaged groups in the population. I don't like to think the over 50s are a disadvantaged group, but hey, uh, never mind, nor will many of you. Um, but look at this little graph, the lowest qualified. This is the only one of these official six Department of Work and Pensions uh, disadvantaged groups for whom the employment rate over the last uh, 15 years or so has actually been falling. Everybody else, you know, that we're kind of worried about people with disabilities, ethnic minorities, lone parents, uh, wrinklies, we're all worried about those, but, you know, their position's all improving, not the lowest qualified. That shows you that skills really, really, really do matter uh, to people's life chances. A better diagram, perhaps, is this one, if you're interested. This divvies everybody up into high, medium, and low skill. Um, and this looks at people's earnings over the life cycle, on <coughs> average, obviously. Uh, and what you can see is obviously these big differentials in earnings between highly skilled, medium skilled, and low skilled people. You can see that these differentials widen over the life cycle, uh, and they're particularly strong for high skilled people. This is the so-called graduate premium. Right? And the difference between being up here and being down there over the life cycle is about, depending on the assumptions you make about how long people work and blah, 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 is about three quarters of a million pounds. That's the difference of being high skilled <coughs> and being low skilled, on average. Of course, for many people it's not like that. For many people it's a very great deal more than that. On average, it's three quarters of a million. Invest in skills rather than do the bloody lottery, will you? I mean, that's kind of the message. Quite important. My final point is this. If you forget all of that, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. This is what really matters. Remember that a workforce with poor skills not only makes their own lives poorer, but it makes all of our lives poorer because it reduces productivity, competitiveness, growth, living standards, and raises taxation and reduces public expenditure. Whereas a highly skilled workforce not only makes their own lives richer, it will make all of our lives richer.